the idea of this particular short demo is just to give you a brief introduction about the tool and uh, primary capabilities of it and what do we have as part of the training plan so that's the intention of it uh, other than that if you have any other details that you want me to cover we can always do that as well so firstly uh, let's see about briefly what actually this tool is what it this does and all so to start with snap logic we need to consider this as a cloud integration tool so we have a bunch of cloud tools available uh, like informatica cloud etc so this is also one of such now cloud integration tools we can consider them as your lightweight data integration tools or lightweight etl tools they can't be compared on par with uh, the enterprise integration data integration tools or enterprise uh, etl tools but the primary or basic activities like reading data from certain data source and apply some sort of data transmissions and then write elsewhere is what are the primary activities of any data integration tool now the pretty much same thing is what you can do in a cloud integration tool also now what is the major difference here you'll find as part of any cloud integration tool is that this primarily works in your cloud infrastructure that means you have your uh, cloud data systems where you need to read write as well right otherwise for a typical enterprise data systems it will be on premise or a cloud combination but coming to cloud data integration tools primarily the end systems will be cloud systems now when it comes to doing this data transmission between cloud endpoints something like aws you are reading from some sql database hosted on aws and maybe you are to write the data into some salesforce again a cloud right you are to read between cloud systems now as part of your cloud integration there is also some application integration so this application integration uh, is something that is implemented when you wanted to do these data transfers as a background process which should be invoked re remotely through a simple api call okay so i'll put it simply say for example you have a dashboard built for your business team and uh, business team means obviously they are non-technical for them on the interface you have only provided a simple options like clicking on a particular button that will actually process certain data sets in the back end and then shows the results on the front end ui in terms of different uh, uh, dashboards so how do i create this event in the back end that whenever a user clicks on a particular button on my front end it has to go to a particular table as a source read that particular data and then process it and then write it and then make it ready to uh, print it on my front end is so this remote call enabling is basically done through something called web service calls api calls so how do i make sure the etl job or a data integration job that i created in the back end would be able to invoke whenever some user in the front end clicks on a particular button is there is this api interfacing that can help us right so that's the ultimate goal of any particular cloud integration tool primarily you will do something called your pipelines you'll build something like this so whatever you are seeing now on my screen is is basically your snap logic interface it's a cloud based tool in there you will be building your pipelines like this using different types of designs and all that but the point is when you are designing something like this which is in the back end which will be reading a something and then writing something how do i invoke this remotely as part of my applications is I eventually convert this particular design into something called a web service call and that particular web service URL will be integrated as part of my applications, right? So that's what yeah. the ultimate goal that we'll be achieving as part of any cloud integration tools. So in order to understand how this works in detail, if you have to uh, split into primary components, 
you have your front end interfacing so this one a web application right that means you have a new url you will be accessing this through a web browser that is what we call it as a platform here in terms of the technical terminology the platform snaplexus snaps is what the three major components that makes it as your total architecture of your snap logic one the front end interface where you build your pipelines second your snaplexus snaplex is your back end engine data integration engine on top of which you will be running this uh, or data flows Yeah. right so third thing is how do we build these jobs or flows you can see there are blocks on this so these are nothing but your snaps so each block helps us perform certain activity be it reading writing or some some doing some data transmission like join or some customization like mapper likewise you'll be using a bunch of snaps which you have available as part of your platform you'll be using all these snaps and then building your pipelines so you have your snaps that helps you create a logical flow or a technical logic that can put into a particular object called pipeline and this way pipeline is something built on your front end interface or an application called platform and when you do this on the front end and the back end how it runs is it runs on your integration engine is called snaplexus now so based on your project requirement you can host these back end engines that actually takes the load of running these flows right this integration engines can be hosted either completely on cloud systems or can be on on premise systems on premise as in something that will be staying behind your firewall so if the engine is set behind your firewall then that is referred as ground plex if the engine is in the cloud that is outside of your system company's firewall then that is called as cloud plex cloud plex ground plex but the generic term is snaplex so that's what here the two terms are given as cloudplex and groundplex how do we determine whether my engine has to be behind firewall or in the cloud it depends where your end systems are endpoints are so if your both endpoints are in the cloud itself that means you are reading from some salesforce and writing into some your uh, aws database etc then everything is in cloud so your engine can be also in the cloud otherwise if one of your data system is in on premise right something like an oracle database that is hosted on your uh, company's systems so you have to read from your on premise so you need to have an engine that connects with your on premise engines as well as your on cloud platform so totally depending upon your endpoints your data endpoints you will need to set up your integration engines it can be groundplex or cloudplex so that's how your communication works so you have built your logic here and once the logic is built when you run the logic it has to go read the data from your source system now depending upon where your source system is if it is in cloud it will use a cloudplex if it is in ground that is your run premise it will use groundplex and so on right that's as simple as it yes. so that's about it that's how the systems works and when it comes to working with different things available in your snap logic as part of the training we'll learn about all these different topics like what are patterns which is basically reusability concept and what are tasks tasks is basically the concept that helps with application programming interfacing that i was talking about initially right and then you have your orgs uh, pipelines and all that stuff so all these details will be going in detail as part of the project uh, uh, training plan and uh, the list of topics broken down into chapters so this is what it is uh, which i can send it across so that you can have it as for your reference as well so we'll be starting with the fundamentals and then we'll be talking about the technical logic that needs to be put in terms of the pipeline designs 
and then we'll go to the advanced level more or less into project perspective wherein all these reusability concepts parameterization concepts api interfacing concepts right just on the rest interfacing concepts are uh explored and versioning concepts of course uh explored which are pretty much important all these as part of your project aspects and so on so this this the duration is 15 hours of the training uh any hands-on is expected to be uh, done on your personal time of course if any if you have any queries you will be taking that in the following session but what are the time that we'll be spending connected uh 15 hours that we are saying is completely for the training hours and uh, we'll be connecting one day uh, one hour a day uh, and uh, five days a week so that brings it to uh, a three week plan that we have ahead right so yeah. that's about this if you have any questions you can let me know and you can take it yeah up. so yeah so what is the runtime for this actually like uh, for del Bumi, so we have some atom kind of thing which is built on java jdk and all and uh, how about the snap like i heard like it is built on some artificial intelligence called iris uh no not really iris is basically it's a agent artificial intelligence agent it's not your runtime so a is basically used uh as part of your platform it it basically when you are designing a uh, pipelines it can come up with suggestions like what can be the next snap uh, that you can use and so on say for example here you can see uh, suggested snaps so when i am designing something yeah. it can basically suggest something that's part basically iris is but when it comes to runtime in your environment it is mostly java but then again it is not really like you just install jdk and you're good but when when the runtime is basically now again we have to point it to snaplex that i'm the thing that i'm talking about so when you install snaplex on your nodes be it your cloud nodes or on-premise nodes it installs the corresponding snap logic specific runtime which basically internally uses your java runtime environment okay and how about the future scope for the snap logic actually we have many competitors right like a um, mule is there, Delbum is there, and uh, many GWT is there. Right. Snap so, yeah. Uh, see, this is a budding technology. I wouldn't say this is uh, uh, super popular or something like that. But then again, amongst its peers like Mule or Informatica Cloud, etc., uh, this is gaining momentum. So, uh, a uh, company started exploring this particular tool uh, because of its simplicity and uh, second thing is because of its uh, capability to do this uh, api interfacing easily without of the much complexity etc and uh, also there is this uh, a hybrid approach or hybrid snap access like either you can have a completely cloud plex or either you can have a completely cloud plex or you can have a hybrid plex also that means you can have a couple of nodes uh, on premise and couple of nodes on cloud which can be made it as a hybrid snaplex and so on. so it's, it has its pros compared to its peers so uh, in its domain with amongst its peer it is uh, prominently good and uh, in general as part of any cloud data integration projects yeah uh, this is really i mean it is not really limited to snap logic as such, but the technology is like that. So cloud integrations, you don't really do as part of many projects, right? Probably you have your applications and you need to do app integrations, then only cloud integrations would matter more or less. Yes. Uh, and the total it's meant for like uh, majorly for real integration with big data and all. Or... Come again, come again. Uh, the snap logic is totally built for like uh, etl uh, integration or how it is not ETL integration as i was mentioning for your cloud integrations you have your source data systems and the target data systems and then uh, you may want to do app integrations uh, mm -hmm. one that is one second thing is you may want to, to build your open-ended web app web services also 
you may not have a physical data source as part of your pipeline. For example, here I have a pipeline. Both are physical data endpoints, SQL and file writer. Come to this pipeline. My source is an open open ended source. Right? It doesn't have a physical data source, be it file or some database. So where do I get the data? As part of the design, dynamically when I run this as a API or a, uh, or a web service there I'll be sending the data as a payload web service request payload or response payload etc which will be uh, uh, in your JSON structure etc so okay, okay. that is also one of the use case where your cloud platforms are used you create your web service interfaces wherein you can have an open-ended source systems are open-ended your target systems or target points like the one that you can see now and you can use this as part of not really app integration you can use it as part of some other etl integrations also or some other uh, json integrations also or rest integrations also so okay. yeah it has its application in multiple places not really like only in the in context of etl we get to use your cloud Cloud integrations, etc. Okay. Okay, that's it, my friend. Ryan. All right then. Thank you. Thank you.